welcome back to our study of the Psalms, and today we are in Psalm 38. David wrote this psalm as a song to be sung, according to what we read before verse 1, for the memorial offering. This is a psalm of repentance. The memorial offering being referred to here was part of the grain offering that was brought to the Lord voluntarily, and it was one of the ways that the Jews showed devotion to the Lord. And while most of the grain offering was given to the priests to eat, the memorial offering was burned on the altar as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. In fact, you can read all about this memorial offering in Leviticus chapter 2. It was an offering, it was not an offering to pay for sin, it was simply an offering of gratitude, of devotion, and praise. And so, when coming to the Lord for fellowship, when faced with the magnificence of who God is, David began to feel the weight of his own sin, it seems, that sin that was weighing him down. And so here in chapter 38, he confesses those sins. Let's read this psalm together. O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. For your arrows have sunk into me, and your hand has come down on me. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head. Like a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. My wounds stink and fester because of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. All the day I go about mourning. For my sides are filled with burning, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and crushed. I groan because of the tumult of my heart. O Lord, all my longing is before you. My sighing is not hidden from you. My heart throbs, my strength fails me, and the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. My friends and companions stand aloof from my plague, and my nearest kin stand far off. Those who seek my life lay their snares. Those who seek my hurt speak of ruin and meditate treachery all day long. But I am like a deaf man, I do not hear, like a mute man who does not open his mouth. I have become like a man who does not hear, and in whose mouths are no rebukes. But for you, O Lord, do I wait. It is you, O Lord my God, who will answer. For I said, only let them not rejoice over me, who boast against me when my foot slips. For I am ready to fall, and my pain is ever before me. I confess my iniquity. I am sorry for my sin. But my foes are vigorous, they are mighty, and many are those who hate me wrongfully. Those who render me evil for good accuse me because I follow after good. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O oh my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord, my salvation. So there it is, Psalm chapter 38. And it's an incredible description, I think, of the effects that sin can have on a righteous heart. David rightly declares that unconfessed sin can cause all kind of health problems. He says in verse 2 that he feels like there's a heavy weight on his shoulders and as if God is pushing him down, he says in verse 3. He declares that there is no health in his bones. He's sick because of his sin. Have you ever seen someone struggling with their health because of an unconfessed sin? My guess is you probably have, and I know that I have as well. It's not a pretty picture when people are so consumed by their sin that it affects their health. It seems like David is having that same problem. And so as David continues to talk of the effects of his sin, he turns his attention to what he calls those who seek his life. His enemies are those who are kicking him while he is down. And they are not afraid to let David know about his sin. And they hope, they are praying uh, themselves that this will be the end of David. That, that, that his sin will be the death of him. And that sounds a lot like our enemy, doesn't it? Our enemy is one who seeks only to steal, to kill, and destroy. His name is Accuser. And he does it about us before God regularly. And our response to those accusations made by our enemy need to be the same of David's in verse 15. He says, but for you, O Lord, do I wait. It is you, O Lord, my God, who will answer. You see, David turns to God. I love how the NLT words verse 14. It says, I choose to hear nothing and I make no reply. I like that. He chooses. 
He chooses not to hear those accusations. He chooses not to take matters into his own hands and lash out at his accusers, maybe increasing his sin. Instead, he turns to the Lord and he waits for the Lord. The heart of this psalm, however, comes in verse 18. David says, I confess my iniquity. I am sorry for my sin. Oh, what a powerful, powerful moment in this psalm. It seems in the day and age that we live in that we, rather than confess sin, we tend to dismiss sin. I know I've been guilty of this in my own life. I know that I've been the one trying to cover up my own sins or to justify my actions rather than just coming clean with God, just admitting my sins and giving it to the Lord. I mean, what is it in us? What is it in us that struggles to admit our sins? What is it in us that refuses to say that we have failed or that we are uh, struggling with failure in our life? There are a lot of answers to those questions, but that's another lesson for another time. I think, though, maybe what we get here in Psalm 38 is a moment for us to do some introspection, to look back at our lives and to confess our sins and, like David, to be sorry for it. May, maybe it's time for all of us, like David, to have this, this moment, this time of repentance, to ask God to do what only He can do, and that is take our sin and our shame and cast it not only from us but even from His own presence. And I think that's an important thing for us as the people of God to regularly do. Now, this psalm finishes with David calling on God to not be far from him and to come quickly to his aid and to his defense. And so here's what I know. God is happy to do just that. You see, as we confess our sins, Scripture is clear that he is faithful to forgive us of those sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As we cry out to him, he hears us. And as we return to him, we find, we find that he never left us that he's always near to his people. Acts 17 makes that clear. Remember Paul declares there that God is not far from each of us and Jesus himself promises that he will never leave us or forsake us. Praise the Lord that our failure and our sins do not get to have the last word if we are in Christ Jesus. Our failure and sin is forgiven as we confess our sins to the Lord, like David has done here in this psalm. And so you haven't gone too far. You haven't done too much. You can come home to the Lord today. You can find forgiveness even now. Your forgiveness as a follower of Jesus Christ is simply a prayer away. So why not call on him now? Why not spend some time looking at your life and calling on him to forgive that which you know stands against his word and his will. I hope that you'll do just that. And I pray that Psalm 38 will be a blessing to your life, that it will be a moment when you can regain your health and you can regain your footing and know that God loves you even in your failures and sins. And as we forgive, as we confess, he forgives. What a God we serve. That's Psalm chapter 38. Uh, we've just got three psalms left, 39, 40, and 41 in this uh, book one of the psalms. And so I hope that you'll join me for these final three of 2023. Thanks for being here today. Have a great week and may God bless you as you strive to live for him.